Bona Lacal, my garden of roses. I think it's time we spend some time talking about AIVD, Cozy Bear, and the Trump-Russia narrative. Now, Dutch news outlets are blowing up this evening with the story that Dutch Military Intelligence Services, or AIVD, were the first to notify U.S. intelligence agencies about Russian attacks on the Democratic National Committee in 2015. According to the story, a hacker with AIVD gained access to a network in a university in Moscow in 2014, almost as a fluke by their descriptions. And within a year, were witness to the attacks on the State Department, DNC, and White House that occurred between late 2014 and 2016. The network which they had infiltrated allegedly belonged to the infamous spear phishing group known as Cozy Bear, otherwise known as Advanced Persistent Threat 29, or APT 29, to the intelligence communities. Spear phishing is a term used to describe the directed uh, and targeted sending of spoofed emails and links to fake websites, in this case, login pages for State Department or DNC service websites, for the purpose of stealing and collecting login credentials and gaining access to a system or network. Dutch news outlets also report that AIVD allegedly had also gained access to a security camera conveniently positioned in a curved hallway outside where the Cozy Bear network supposedly exists and have used this camera to gather images of anyone who enters or exits the room for the purpose of comparing these images uh, to those pictures of known Russian spies that they have. According to Volkskans and NOS, over the course of a few months, the Dutch intelligence services allegedly had front row seats in observing Cozy Bear penetrating several US networks, including that of the DNC and State Department, and informed the FBI and NSA. However, none of the sources cited in their articles spoke on the record, nor do we have any evidence to support what they're saying. We are just continuing along with one side of the story, which we're supposed to believe at face value. AIVD and other intelligence agencies believe Cozy Bear to be connected to either Russian FSB or SVR, though no public evidence exists to confirm this. In addition, AIVD reports that they no longer have access to Cozy Bear's networks, a statement that I find far too convenient to allow this story to go unchecked. I keep using the word allegedly and supposedly because at this point that's all we have, allegations and suppositions. This story brings up far more questions than it does answers. If AIVD had this information at the time of the attacks and gave it to US intelligence agencies, why has there been any question to whether the Russians hacked the elections in the first place? Wouldn't this information be the smoking gun which every investigative journalist and intelligence agency has wanted? If the networks that AIVD infiltrated were so nondescript at the time, what led them to maintain observation on them for nearly a year before any actionable intelligence was obtained from them? Cozy Bear was announced as the hackers by CrowdStrike, one of the intelligence assets connected with the DNC and connected to the anti-Trump dossier, which has been largely been proven false, back in the summer of 2016. If the, if, why has it taken Mueller six months and the FBI more than a, a year and a half if they have the evidence sitting right in front of them. If a group of spear fishers, hackers who use these targeted faked websites and emails to ob obtain login credentials for their targets, and whose networks operate out of a university network in Moscow, were capable of penetrating US government networks, why has nothing been done nor spoken about regarding this for more than three years? Even if this AIVD fluke story is true, what does it actually have to do with the election? It's not uncommon for intelligence agencies to keep tabs on other governments, even allied governments, uh, as shown by the fact that AIVD was actively searching and hacking into networks in Russia, as well as other countries back in 2014. It's not like 
even if these, uh, even if Cozy Bear is part of the uh, SVR, what they were doing is absolutely indistinguishable from what the Dutch government was doing. And despite Hillary Clinton trying to, trying her damnedest to blame her loss on the DNC hack, none of what is described here is an active attack on the election, merely attempts by so-called hackers to gain observational ec access to U.S. networks. Given there were multiple sources for Hillary Clinton's emails, and most of the emails didn't come from Russian sources, but rather unnamed sources who leaked to WikiLeaks, including Seth Rich and the Guccifer 2.0 documents, not to mention the amount of classified information which was uh, illegally transferred over insecure networks and revealed by the release of Hillary Clinton's emails. Faith in Clinton's ability to lead has been in question throughout the election and led to her loss. The fact of the matter is, this story is just another part of attempting to look good in the current narrative, because many people believe the Trump-Russia collusion narrative, even though there's no evidence to state that Trump and Russia colluded, there's no evidence to show that Russia hacked the elections, merely kept observation on our country during the time of the elections. And at this point, I'm left to wonder how this does anyone any good, why they're even sharing this. None of this evidence actually c confirms any story, as I've previously stated. What we're seeing here is a big, exciting story. It's like watching the movie Hackers for the first time if you know nothing about fucking computers. And oh, this group of crackshot hackers that no one knows about because the AIVD has no long history of successful attacks or information gathering are making themselves out to sound like the heroes that tried to save the Americans from attacks, when really all we're getting out of this is information about uh, that was dismissed uh, a year and a half ago when CrowdStrike tried to share it. CrowdStrike, of course, being a company that is renowned for being connected to releasing false information to intelligence agencies and the DNC as well. So, I mean, what else do we have to look at here? Because they're not giving us any evidence, merely narrative. They're not telling us anything new. They're merely trying to point the finger at Cozy Bear, a, a group of hackers who I don't consider that important because despite their intent on gaining observational access to networks within the United States, all they are are spear fishers. They're no different than Nigerian princes who try and get your bank information in the grand scheme of things. They aren't capable of, if they were capable of anything great, they would have done a lot more than spearfished out login credentials. There's no strong evidence to state that malware was placed on any systems. There's no strong evidence to state anything of the sort. And what we're left with is just more a beautiful story that people can think of, especially uh, the Dutch, can think of as great and wonderful acts on the part of their intelligence services without any evidence to back it up. And without any evidence to back it up, I am still going to sit back and wait for Mueller to come out with his evidence, because Mueller certainly hasn't mentioned any hard evidence regarding Russian, uh, uh, Russian hackers or the FSB or SVR. And s since when are we trusting CrowdStrike to begin with? Since when are we trusting any intelligence agencies at this point, considering the amount of control they've tried to exert? They had this information since 2015 and have done nothing about it except whine and cry, oh no, the Russians are hacking us. Are our intelligence agencies really so weak 
that they can't they can't make they can't make CNN, for example, which the CIA has had yearly six hundred million dollar contracts with for the sake of releasing propaganda and intelligence leaks alike, come forward and explain this in a direct and straightforward way. Why are we hearing this from the Netherlands? The reason is it's very likely completely false and just more of a story to comfort people in their thought that Donald Trump was illegally or unrightly elected president. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Whether we like it or not, whether anyone likes it or not, Donald Trump is our president and he has greatly improved our economy. He has greatly improved the job market in the United States. He has cut down on bureaucratic red tape and he has fought with a very, very secretive FBI, a very troublesome Democratic uh, half of Congress, and all while having every odd turned against him. Donald Trump is out in uh, Davos, Switzerland, and he's going to be speaking very bluntly on what I think is the going to be one of the best explanations of the America First policy, which, mind you, doesn't mean America alone or America protectionists. It merely means making sure we make our own beds before we start messing around with other people's beds. And while I might not agree entirely with Trump's uh, militaristic actions, his militaristic actions have shut down ISIS in a way uh, Obama's administration was completely unable to for nearly eight years. So even if the Russian investigations into our government and observation of our DNC and other uh, networks happened, I see no reason that it has any connection to the election itself, nor do I see it causing anything uh, having any effect on Mueller's investigation. In the worst case scenario, all of this is true and everyone is being misled by manipulation of the story to make it sound like Russians hacked our elections, when in reality, Russian hackers gained observation into the US government, just like the Dutch uh, intelligence services gained access to the Russian government, the U.S. has gained access to the Dutch government, and so on, and so on, and so on. We're definitely going to be talking about this more as the weekend as the weekend comes and more information comes out, but for now, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Mwah.